Hey family, um, yeah, so I realize that I always say hey everybody and y'all, I don't know if y'all have, but y'all are more than everybody, y'all are my family, so, um, anyway, hey fam, um, wanna start by saying that I got on shorts, I'm just sitting down in my chair, thus, you know, my legs are out, whatever, but moving forward, um, so somebody had made a request because they were talking about how basically early in their journey, um, of consciousness, they felt like they were more angry and more like militant and then as they wanted to learn more about their spirituality as africans you know they felt like and the people around them felt like they became less militant so he just wanted me to talk about my experience or what do i think about like the balance between the black power movement and spirituality which i think is a great topic because i actually think about this all the time all the time and um but i'll say too that like my thoughts on it are way more extensive than what I'm gonna share. So if you wanna know something particular, if you you know, if you have more questions, then let me know. Um, so I wanna first start talking about how first off, a lot of people think that, you know, I hear people a lot thinking that when we say that we're pro black, you know, that that means that we're separating our cells on this earth as connected to everything else and that's not true so a lot of christians a lot of religious people in general like to be like love all you know we all you know why you you know let's be all about all people blah 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 all that good stuff so the problem that i have with that or how it doesn't relate to spirituality or how spirituality relates to this idea of being pro-black is that a lot of people being pro-black you might start off being pro-black because you see black people going through something in their life on an everyday basis right and then that makes you mad and you a black person so now you mad and you angry and it's like now i'm all for my people and um as i went further on my journey i realized that wait you know about me being all about my people i know that people aren't going to stand up in the world unless me and my people stand up and that's just the way it is um black people are the most oppressed people in society and spiritually if we want to think about the most oppressed people in society them having the greatest history with oppression but also being the people that were taken from their land to make this these greatest of empires right these european empires thus though they they've been the most oppressed there's also it must be the most strength there too because you ain't gonna go build a nation with the weakest people you're just not gonna do that so with that being said the way i spiritually relate to this idea of being pro-black is that i understand that when we stand up the rest of the world will stand up and um that i recognize us or i think of us as being well first off we are the original people you know everybody came from africa and with that we as black people have that blood running through our veins until this day and in strong amounts and with that i believe us to be the guardians of the earth you know the first people on earth like your mama and your daddy what they gonna do they gonna make sure that they protect the household you know so either way um so that's that pro-black that means that i know that when i'm free once i free my people then everybody else gonna be free too i don't have to focus on everybody else and honestly by focusing on everybody in a clump way that ignores the oppression that black people face when they face the most because we can't come to common it ain't gonna be no common things because the way that we need to fight white supremacy is all in our own fields and that's why i'm pro-black that's why i'm all about black people having their own spaces but i'm about every minority having their own space to all fight white supremacy but i also realize that by me fighting for blackness first that's when everybody will realize that that is what we should be doing as an entire world fighting against white supremacy so but if i were like love all like how we've been doing i'm not you know they're not gonna understand that concept you know it's gonna we are so desensitized to the idea of loving all people because we don't love all people but anyway moving forward you know so pro-blackness comes out of the fact that oppression was put on us by white supremacy and given that this oppression imposes European ideals onto every minority community. Being pro-black mean pro-black, like pro-me, only puts me at the forefront and gives the Europeans no play play at all. And once every community starts doing that, because they will, once they see black people rocking their froze, 
Once they see black people going over there, power to the people. You think they're going to still be following these white ideals? No, they're not. <laughs> so with that, I think of pro-black people as being the most humanitarians in the world. Um, yeah, and they might be consciously humanitarians or they might not be, but either way. We care about more life than anything else because by me even focusing on me is going to free everybody. So that's that idea. Um, next thing is like, I guess that goes into my experience and how basically in my experience, I experienced the same thing where like, basically I understand what he's saying. Like I was reading books and I was listening to straight up hip hop, you know, in the beginning of my journey, because really it was like, I found out that I was lied to. And it was like all about getting all the knowledge that I never knew, you know, basically I was rebuilding who it was that I was going to be. And I was so angry because everything that I found out that they lied about, of course, who's not going to be angry when they found out that they literally been lied to about everything in life, you know? So we're angry where we seem like, like real forceful with our like militancy. And I know that for me, you know, it's something that I talked about all the time, like, you know, black this, black that, black this, but I said it so angrily. It wasn't, I was saying it in a way to teach other people where I felt I always felt the need to educate in that moment like what I was getting you know in that moment like I was giving that to other people where I like was pressing it on them too you know and where I am now in my journey is um where you know now I'm seeing other people I'm seeing other people waking up around me I'm seeing that there have been people that have been woke way before me and I'm basically now understanding that I'm not the only one doing this thing and that even if I die today, there are still going to be people doing this thing. And I don't believe that the revolution is on my back in the way that I used to. And I think that when I first started thinking really kind of internally, you know, I'm thinking like I'm one of the only people with this knowledge. And what am I going to do for the revolution moving forward? And how am I going to start the revolution? How am I going to do this and that? And then as you become spiritually connected, which is, you know, a connection to everything around you, that's when I realized, like, this, the revolution is here. We're already in revolution. This is not something that is going to be stopped or hindered by Brie, you know. Um, though I am here to affect it in a very positive way and to make great changes, if I die tomorrow, it's still going to go, and I have all the confidence in the world in that, and I think that by just knowing that, for me, has made me way more lax, or not even lax, just more grounded, more, because before I was really angry, and I and I felt like I needed spiritual grounding, like, because I just felt like I could not be that angry living through my life, and the people around me felt the same way, they was just like, breathe, you know, we worried about you, and I'm angry with them, because it's like, hey, hey, what you worried about me for, like, I'm mad, validly so and I still feel like that like everybody we go through our transitions in our journey and I think that you have to start off being angry and then you get to a point of being productive with that anger but you know the quote goes with Malcolm X he said first people got to get angry for them to do something you know what I mean so it got to start there before anything else can be done so you know um with that being said we all just go through our own little stages in the life and um I think that part of that too was like I say I went from books and hip-hop because Books and hip hop is where I got all my knowledge, you know, because hip hop is a great device, like at least real hip hop is great for making us aware of our everyday surroundings because somebody is now pointing that out in music. And, you know, a lot of it is just socially conscious where they talk about the oppressions that we face in everyday life in our communities. And that's why it's such a spiritual music and why black people can just I feel like for me, it, I cling to it because it's my life. You know, I feel like hip hop is my life experience. I feel like I connect to it just all around because of what we've been brought into in this um, European society. I'm not even going to say American society, European society. Um, so with that, you know, so it's great for awareness. Books and hip hop, great for awareness. Where I am now, culture and reggae that's what i'm labeling it as right now but that's not necessarily all that it is and what i mean by that is that like at first i was starting off with all the education i could possibly get because i had realized that my life was a lie and now that i'm now that i've learned many of the lies of society or now at least i've learned not to trust anything i can move 
to knowing who it is that that means that I am. Like, you know, what does that mean for my life then? What does that mean? Because my life started crashing down. When I realized that everything around me was a lie, my life started crashing down. And I didn't know where to place my spiritual energy. I didn't know where to place anything about my life. And now, finding my African roots, which is my culture, that is what's helping to ground me in my spirituality. It's what, when I wake up every morning, why I feel sane, why I feel good, why I feel, like, amazing. Because I'm seeing the people around me or I'm feeling connected to my black people around me. Like, I don't know if y'all walk every day outside or something or if you just feel the difference in how it felt a year ago. You know, I talk to black people every time I see them, you know, now. And it's just like before I just felt like we kind of had this disconnect and now I kind of feel like I see people feel like it, like feeling like we need each other in order to keep moving forward. And we need to commune with each other because we don't, we the only thing that we got. So with that, with just knowing that it's just like with feeling culture, with realizing when I look around that blackness is everywhere and that black people are literally being African around me, that me being African around other people, by going to African dance lessons, African drum lessons, because that's two things that I just picked up recently, um, that being in my own meditative, you know, forms, that talking to my ancestors, which is something that I didn't used to do, um, by literally just, you know, asking for dreams, um, where different things are confirmed. All of these things are really, really adding to why I feel less concerned about whether or not this is going to happen. Um, because I know that it is. And I get it confirmation every single day um, from what's around me. But also when I go to sleep at night, I get dreams that tell me or to me tell me that I'm doing the right thing. So it's nothing to worry about. It's nothing to feel like I got to sit up here and be so urgent about it. When it's already happening, we already in emotions. And it's more so about being patient, you know, because that's something that I've always liked is my patience. So if anything, this journey is teaching me how to be patient with life and the people and the things around me and to go step by step and not to even rush myself and rush other people to their own journey. Because bottom line is that where I am today, I still had to grow to get there. So... That's another thing that I came and I had to reflect on is that I didn't get here just by somebody yelling at me or, you know, just preaching it down my throat as much as it is that part of it had to be my own self-reflection. So it's like I continue to be brief the same way that people around me who sparked me were just being known. I continue to be brief and also just feel like know that I'm being me. Instead of being a teacher, you know, I'm being Brie, like, that's basically where I'm at right now. Like, am I being Brie or am I just thinking that I need to be the teacher in this moment? Because people are going to learn just by the energy that I exhort. And I'm more at that stage where I want to exhort all the things that I internally feel. I don't want to have to keep speaking it. I want people to just feel it when they're around me. And then if they feel it around me, then they'll look inside of them and be like, why don't I feel like that? Rather than me saying, hey, feel like this. And then people might feel like I'm preaching to them and telling them how they should be living their life or telling them that my life or the way I'm living is better than theirs. And that's just not the case because we all got this journey. Um, so with that being said, I guess in that way, um, you know, spirituality, I don't think makes me less militant as much as it is that I'm more now that I'm more on my journey and understanding the connectedness to everything around me, I got to realize how my actions and how what I say and how I say it, though I'm still going to be free and I'm going to always live out my spirit to the fullest, I got to understand how that's still going to connect all the things around me. So it's kind of changing my outlook on things because if I'm trying to connect this greater, like this, this glow, if I'm trying to connect this glow with people and I know that if I say it in this way I'm only going to get these select few but if I just live out it that and that means that I don't even have to change anything about myself that just means that I'm being me but feeling like I don't have to speak all the time in the, in the words if I just live out my experience instead of even speaking in a certain way to get a few people everybody experiences me and what I'm giving out to the world in their own way, thus what they're attracted to, they take in that moment 
and everything else they leave aside. But I'm not telling them what to take away from me, just being me, you know. But when you try to teach somebody a lesson, it's very biased because you want them to learn it in a way that you're teaching it. Um, so it makes it doesn't make me less militant, nor does it make me believe that this is less of an issue or that I less see black people suffering. It just means that in order for me to get the more soldiers that I need, then I got to just live it. I can't keep talking about it. I got to be about that life. And when you start being about that life, at least for me, when I started being about that life, when I started wearing this, when I started wearing this, when I started just doing my art, when I just started expressing myself in these other mediums, then I realized, like, I was okay. Like, you know, I wasn't as angry anymore. And, um... So it went from me feeling really urgent because I felt like we needed to wake up. And now I'm at the place where I know we're waking up. So all I do is smile every day. I'm sorry. Like all I can do is smile because I feel like the people around me have no idea what this world is coming to. But I do. Thus, I'm happy because you can try to hurt me on these little instances every day if you want to. But you don't understand what you're doing for my people is great because it's all connected. So you act the fool. Now, okay, my people see it. And now what? We get more people every single day. Just not even by me doing anything. Not even by me. Brie ain't doing the ones that's influencing people to make them want to come on over to the black power side. It's really the world. The world going to do it for me. Like the world, the Europeans, they're going to do it for me. They're going to handle all of this for me. And all the people who have the knowledge are there to do then is to literally be there to support those who are just now learning. And that's why I believe that spiritual people, you know, we need very hard, angry, militant, sure, you know, because that's what we start off in our journey. So we're going to have a variance of people on different levels and spectrums of where they are in this movement right now but the bottom line is that we can't have all angry people everybody can't stay here where we angry after we find out what we find out because it has to have been people who since then have learned a way to manage that anger in a productive way thus that us being at this place right now where we're trying to learn how to manage our anger in a productive way as more people come along, the same way that it's been with me, as more people come along, then they'll now have people to guide them on what we're going to be doing next. Like, oh, yeah, I feel you, brother, because at the end of the day, we need people that can relate to these angry people. So it's not like we can just skip the step of being angry and just going straight to the step of being spiritual. We need to be able to relate to these people's anger because it's very valid. And now we teach what should we be doing with that anger? How should we be putting that into our space to make it positive you know what I mean so with that being said everybody's needed in this movement I don't think anybody needs to feel bad when they start becoming more spiritual um I think that even myself like I kind of felt like um I was like uh maybe being less pro-black or something because I started seeing how literally everything was connected to me but then it's like no I'm actually not less pro-black because I still think of black people as being the most beautiful creatures. I'm still a pro-black person. I'm all the way pro-black, all off top. But I also realize that we as black people, we are what makes everything else connected. So by me caring about all life forms, that's very, that's legit, you know, because that's my job as a black person. I am supposed to care about all life forms. And if I'm the most oppressed person in society, it would be very, very evil of me not to be able to um, understand or recognize or sympathize or empathize with other groups of people, but also live in things that are oppressed and silenced because of people who think that they have more power or things that think they have more power. So that's something that I can relate to. And, um, so anyway, that's that. And um, so I, the last point that I wanted to end with is like really just more so about the preservation of ourselves um, on this earth and how important that is. Because I think that a lot of time, you know, with religion, we get into how we don't want to hurt people, you know, and we don't want to hurt things. And 
that, like, I know I grew up in a family where we didn't have no guns. I never saw a gun in my life until I got older, you know, until I got, well, I, I saw my friends with, like, you know, the people in my neighborhoods with guns, but I never had a gun in my household. We didn't grow up with guns, and to this day, my granny, you know, she feels however she, she has her reservations about guns, and I feel like we are just taught to think in a way of preserving our souls, but not our bodies. We are so afraid of what's going to happen when we die, but not afraid of what we're doing to ourselves as we don't live on this earth today, you know? Um, and I feel like the way that I see the black movement and how spiritual it is, because the black power movement in general, that's how it relates to spirituality, because it is a spiritual movement. And my and my life and experience and how I think it's a very spiritual movement because number one, you know, it's about a legacy, you know, preservation. We worried about the afterlife and us going to heaven or hell, but what's going to happen? Like if our bloodline ain't here no more, like if humanity is extinct, if black people got the strongest genes, should we keep them around? So thus humans can live the longest amount of time. So with that being said, it's just like I, I want to make sure that when I die, every generation that lives after me doesn't have to go through this, man. That's spiritual. That's spiritual. That's not religion for you. That's spiritual for you because I want to not be in a spiritual world and be looking into the same issues that I see every day. And I don't want to be the reason that it stays the same. We're not supposed to be. And honestly, I feel like that's a... That's us damaging our spirit. That's degrading our spirit if we just sit here and wait until later, you know, until we're preserved in our afterlife. You know, we need to fight for the now. Uh, preserving our bodies, that's the first thing. If we preserve our bodies, then we preserve the bodies of those that come after us. Um, I don't want to shoot nobody. I don't ever want to have to kill nobody. But at the end of the day, no black person do. We are spiritual people. We've never been the violent people. But at the same time, when there are people being violent towards you and your people, and they're making it so that your people, they want your people extinct, do you think that's God's plan for you to just die the way they want you to? And to just join God in the afterlife? Like, what? No. We're supposed to be doing something with this experience, man, and it's up to us to actually do it. What are you going to do with that 400 plus years of oppression? Like, are you going to die oppressed? Or do you realize that you've been suffering this dang long and you stand up and then realize that that is when humanity comes back full circle? And we are the balance of it all. We bring it back to its, its balance in a way that it's supposed to be. Everybody know, you won't never, a bully ain't never going to stop bullying you until you stand up. Stop telling people that you got to ignore the bully. Nobody tells their kids that they got to ignore the bully anymore. Well, if they do, they stupid. You don't tell your kids that they supposed to ignore the bully. In the black family, we had no problem telling them to go out there and beat that bully's butt. But when it comes to the white man, nobody want to do it. So anyway, bottom line, that's a spiritual thing. You got to you gotta preserve the body, man, because you got to preserve the future generations. It's not about your body. It's about all black bodies. And about you dying or even allowing your people to die every day that's you literally just helping or literally not doing anything about the destruction of your people and, and your future generations and y'all legacy and um we gotta live forever we're strong we are powerful we are mighty we done been through a lot there ain't no reason that we should be outlived by people who have literally damaged us since the time since the beginning of time so um with that being said it's a spiritual thing, and um, as far as that, it started for me with the preservation of the earth, I mean, of the body, like, you know, I was thinking about us preserving ourselves and our bodies on an everyday basis, and then as I move forward, though, I think about the preservation of the earth, and I think about how, um, you know, the Europeans are the reason that we have these big old buildings that have all these heavy smoke. The Europeans are the reason that we have all these... Uh, radiation problems the europeans are the reason that we have these cruise ships that go into the waters and pollute the water and and the air as they go to these black lands on these cruise ships with these white people these are europeans that are damaging our land that are cutting down our trees hunting our animals literally not giving a fuck about any other form of life but their own 
this is bigger than some pro-black shit. This is pro-black, but pro-blackness, which in, in African spirituality, it going together, blackness and your spirituality, being connected to everything around you, given you were the original of this earth, there is a connection that is stronger to everything around you than anybody else on this planet. When we come full circle and when we realize that we need to go back to our natural practices, that turns and revolutionizes the world. You know, my, 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 my teacher, he talks about this idea of ecological revolution and he believes that humans will become extinct and, you know, unless they realize their relationship to every other thing around them. Until they stop fearing themselves as, as the other, you know, or fearing the others of them. Like, until we start, stop fearing other races, then, and stop fearing other things in general, fearing other animals, fearing other things. And when we realize that we all connected in this form of life, then that's, you know... And until we do that, then we're just going to degrade ourselves and human life can become extinct. And then another form of life can then replace it. Who was more understanding and more um, respectful to the balance and circle of life. And um, I think the concept is, I mean, I never heard of it until he, you know, of course, until he made it up. And I think that as far as the concept is concerned and how he explains it, you know, I, I heavily agree with a lot of parts to it. And I think that. For me, the way I told him is that I think about ecological revolution as being spiritual revolution. I would say spiritual revolution, that we need a spiritual revolution. And that's to say that we need to feel like we're connected to everything around us. The way I think about an ecological revolution is people scientifically understanding that, hey, as a human body, I won't last unless X, Y, and Z. And I mean, though that might be where it starts, I think that it should be that we are morally doing it. You know, we're doing it for the moral right reasons because that's the only way that it stays consistent. Science changes every day. You know, it could be another scientist that comes along with another theory and then people decide that they don't want to do it anymore. That's why I say we need a spiritual revolution. We, we need something that is going to help us to literally respect all life forms at all times that we can teach our kids over and over again and not religion but spiritual because spirituality there there is no right or wrong but it is a connection and as long as you know that connection if you do something bad you do something bad but understand that there's a connection to what you just did you know and and that's the way that i feel like as human beings Ideally, that's the way it's going to go or that's the way it should go in order for us to, you know, fully make the balance. And um, I'm also very realistic in knowing that that's not going to happen in my time. You know, that's not going to happen in the next few years. It's not going to happen in the next 20 or the next 30 or the next 40. I don't believe because we still got this race issue that we got to combat. And the people that are destroying the earth, the people who told the Africans that if they have something on a leaf, if they eat and they food on a leaf, that it's savage. These are the same people that got plastic bags and containers and styrofoam that goes into the ocean every single day and destroys our animals, destroys our planet, destroys our everything, destroys our water. We can't even live. We don't even have fresh water because of how polluted everything is and the fact that we like to make our life so easy with these, with these packages, with trash, with all of these things that we have. So, I mean... Thus, those people or those things, those forces that are degrading the earth but and also degrading the people that are living on the, on the earth because these things are all connected, they have to go. They have to, we have to be able to balance this energy out. And if they're not going to be saved, then they have to go. Because the bottom line is that, like I say, I believe black people to be the guardians of the earth. If you're the guardian of the earth, that means you're a guardian. That, uh, that means you're a protector. That means that anything that comes in and harms that earth or that thing, the things on this earth, that means that you have to now protect those things from that. It don't mean you can't hurt that thing because you're trying to keep all life forms. I mean, if, you a got, if you're a guardian, guardians have to have weapons, and that's just the bottom line. And um, I was watching this video, and, um, you know, an elder, she was talking about how, like, the ancestors were mad, you know, and she was talking about how the ancestors 
want to come back home to the places that they remember. You know, they want to come back to what they remember and, you know, feel that kind of energy and, you know, reminisce on those things. And then they coming back and those things aren't here anymore. And they coming back to a fucked up earth and they coming back to no clean air. And, you know, she says that the ancestors, they not happy with us. And, I mean, that's a black woman. And as black people, we have these connections with our ancestors where we have these dreams and um, different things that happen to us that give us inkling to what's happening in, into, into the world. And um, not everybody knows that that's what it is, but that's what it is. And, I mean, if we are being told that the ancestors are mad because of the earth, who you think supposed to do something about it? You think they they think white people supposed to do it when our ancestors that passed away is the people who white people didn't like, who 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 white people killed? Do you think that that's really what it is? I don't think so. You know, I think that the reason that they tell like we should be preserving the earth, it's our duty to stand up for our rights as black people. It is also our duty to stand up for the rights of humanity and not just humanity, all life on earth. Um, so that's the way I see, you know, my blackness and my spirituality. I see it as being something that at first started off to be a really specific black thing. And the more that I realized or learned my black self and how my black self was connected to everything else, it became a spiritual thing. And um, so I'm still just as militant but the way that I express my militancy is just really different because now I conceptualize it in a very spiritual way. I'm going to think about everything full circle. You know, before I just wanted to kill white people off because they was killing us off, or at least that's how I felt, you know. It's like, oh, y'all killing us off? Then y'all need to be killed off. We need to go to war. And it's like, yeah, it's true. Like the way that the Rastas believe. They're very peaceful people. Clearly, they all about love. But one thing that they know for certain or their belief or their ideology is that though they're all about peace and love, they believe that the world is going to come to a place where it's going to be a violent war. And that's going to keep us, that's going to make us, you know, whole again. And I guess that's my belief, too. It's like I don't think that black people have ever had a problem believing in humanity or even wanting to believe in humanity because we are spiritual people who always want to super save all these hoes, you know, but um, at the end of the day, if people were in power for 400 plus years and they got there violently, if you're a spiritual person, you kind of see that there has to be a balance, you know, it has to come full circle, something has to give, how do they get out of that position, you know, so I don't want it to be a war. I'm not a violent person. I don't think any of us to be violent people, naturally. Um, at least not any black people. <laughs> um, but at the end of the day, that's what's going to have to happen. So, before I just wanted to kick their ass, and now I just know I have to kick their ass. And um, I feel sad for them. Um, not in a way of sympathetic. I'm not sympathetic at all, but I feel sad for people who are literally spiritually dead who don't give a fuck about other lives or who give more fuck about a dog or a lion than they do a human being who they kill every single day the fact that you have white people that can sit up here and even complain about animal cruelty but they don't give a fuck about black cruelty that shit is sad to me that's like wow you know um to, that you can be that desensitized to human life but anyway, um, that's kind of where I am. And um, I guess if you have more questions, you can tell me or let me know what those questions are. I think that by dressing like this is another thing, like by having my Black Matter lives on, by expressing and exuberating my blackness, you know, that's where I feel the most whole and where I feel like they aren't getting to me. You know, when I'm black, regardless of what they do, they are not affecting me. You know, when I'm going to school and I'm listening to my hip-hop and, you know, it's talking about how much white supremacy has fucked us up, I go into class because I go to a PWI and I'd be like, yeah, motherfucker, don't fuck with me. You know, I'd be feeling like, yeah, I wish they would say some shit to me. That's how I'd be feeling. 
but then if I listen to my reggae or my African music, um, as I'm going to class, given that these musics are more upbeat, and that's me, like, I like to balance, like, even now, I listen to hip-hop every day, but I also listen to reggae or African music every day, because at the end of the day, our spirits need both. We need awareness, but we also need something that just makes us feel good, that heals us, you know? And awareness can be healing. To know that you connect to other people around the world off of this one experience is very healing. The rhythms within a reggae and um, uh, African music is what speaks to our soul. And um, with that, you know, if I'm going to class and I'm listening to reggae, though, I'm in me. I ain't thinking about nobody else. I ain't thinking about this world. I'm not thinking about these, these fleshly things. I'm thinking about how my spirit dances to the drum or the beat, you know, and how as an African spirit, I feel blessed to have that ability. And that's something that they wish that they could have. And now I can do this in front of them. And not because I'm whatever, but this is us even expressing ourselves artistically is something that they wish they could do. And it doesn't cost anything to do that. And um, so that's where I'm at. Every day on an everyday basis, I'm more happy because I'm living in my blackness. My blackness has all to do with that. But also by me living in my blackness, I'm more connected to everything around me. So my spirituality has all to do with that. And as I move further in my journey, I don't become less about my blackness. I just become way more in tune with how what I'm doing right now is going to affect everything or how it is affecting everything. So um, it's great to know that there are people that are coming along their journeys in the same way. Um, don't be afraid of that. Also, don't push it away because gurus or people who are spiritually very, very much inclined our priestesses and our priests within our African spirituality, you know, these kind of things are really needed, you know, because they really do help with getting us uh, to where we need to go in the best manner um, and not in the manner that's just based off a of simple emotion, you know. So I can keep talking about this forever and ever, but I'm going to stop now. And I hope that y'all got something out of this video. Um, I don't know if I said everything that I needed to say, but um, if I need to make another video, I guess I will. But yeah, hope y'all have a great day. See y'all.